My name is Lisa Vaughn. I'm a statistician at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, and I focus on studying the epidemiology of kidney stones. I'm going to present a paper we recently published in Mayo Clinic Proceedings entitled, A Tool to Predict Symptomatic Kidney Stone Recurrence After the First and Subsequent Episodes. The study developed a revised recurrence of kidney stones, or ROCKS, prediction model to estimate symptomatic recurrence risks in stone formers with one or multiple past stone episodes. The predictors for symptomatic recurrence in the final model are either risk factors for kidney stone formation and growth, or they reflect the actual kidney stone burden at the last episode. Compared to our previously developed ROCKS tool, we used a larger sample size and a more flexible statistical approach to develop the model that accounted for multiple kidney stone episodes over time instead of just focusing on the first episode as we did prior. In addition to the predictors we have previously reported, uh, we discovered that higher body mass index and pregnancy also predicted recurrence. Obesity is an established risk factor for kidney stones that may increase the risk of recurrence via hypercalcuria or via insulin resistance with lower pH and uh, citrate. While pregnancy has recently been identified as a risk factor for kidney stones, possibly due to hypercalcuria during pregnancy. We were, in addition, able to more accurately quantify the radiogra radiographic predictors for kidney stone recurrence. We found that lower pole or pelvic kidney stones, the number of kidney stones and the diameter of the largest kidney stone each independently predicted symptomatic recurrence. Lower pole stones may lead to future symptomatic episodes because they reflect previously detached stones with a lower pole location due to gravity over time. And they may also reflect stones that formed out of residual fragments from past stone surgeries, or they could also reflect stones that are too tedious to remove during surgery due to their location. So both the size and the number of kidney stones have previously been found to be predictive of future symptomatic stone episodes in referral populations. So one of the key findings in this analysis we found is that the number of past episodes increases the risk of future stone episodes, uh, but only up to about the fifth episode in unadjusted analysis and up to the fourth in adjusted analysis. We believe the reason for this may be that with subsequent symptomatic recurrence, stone formers may learn to manage some of their episodes on their own without having to seek clinical care. And in fact, we found that reported self-managed stone episodes without clinical care became more common with each subsequent confirmed stone episode, although unfortunately these are often not documented in the medical record. The AUA guidelines call for a widespread involvement of physicians in the evaluation and prevention of stones. This includes offering evidence-based diet and pharmacologic therapies to prevent kidney stone recurrence. At the Mayo Clinic, most kidney stone formers are referred to a nephrologist to ensure this happens, often with the help of a dietitian as well. And usually this nephrology visit also includes a 24-hour urine collection in addition to blood tests to try to guide the choice of stone prevention therapies. However, in many other institutions, stone formers are managed by urologists for stone surgeries and their primary care provider for stone prevention who may lack the expertise in stone prevention therapies. So this ROCKS tool we developed can be used by any provider to assess the risk of kidney stone recurrence, not just nephrologists. This tool can be used to guide the management of stone formers by individualizing preventative interventions based on the risk of symptomatic recurrence. For example, a patient at low risk of recurrence may be advised to focus only on drinking more water, whereas a patient at high risk of recurrence may be advised to consider stone prevention medications such as potassium citrate. This tool can also be used to estimate symptomatic stone event rates in clinical trials on kidney stone prevention, and this will allow investigators to more accurately assess the risk of recurrence and to determine the number of patients that they need to recruit. So most patients with kidney stones undergo limited evaluations as to the cause of their kidney stones, and few actually receive preventative therapy. This prediction tool, we hope, will help identify kidney stone formers at the greatest risk for a subsequent symptomatic episode, who may then benefit most from medical evaluations and more aggressive intervention to prevent kidney stones. For example, using our model, the risk of symptomatic recurrence in the next five to 10 years for individual stone formers from our data set range from 0.9% all the way to 94%, depending on their clinical and radiographic risk factors and also 
the number of past stone episodes and the year since their last stone episode. So external validation is definitely needed. This will help determine if there are regional or ethnic differences in how this rocks tool performs at other locations and in other populations. Also, future studies are needed to determine whether the risk factors identified in this rocks tool predict kidney stone episodes that are self-managed or are detected by changes in kidney stone burden across CT scans over time, in addition to the seen or symptomatic stones which we focused on in this study. Thank you for your interest in our study. We hope you will find the information useful in your practice, and we hope you enjoy reading the article. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.